Hello. My name is uh, Inge Donkervoort, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, Zerti and escape rooms in Zerti. Uh, we had a really uh, rough uh, two years, and or a bit a longer year. And um, uh, one of the things that w uh, you could do is making learning fun, uh, although it is online. And you can do that with escape rooms. And Zerti is really um, good to do that. I'm giving this presentation live, so I hope everything works. I will show you some examples. And if we have time enough, I will show you um, how uh, it's uh, how, you, how it shows on the back uh, end of the uh, the escape room, so you can see how it's built up. Uh, but for you who don't know Zerti, uh, is does anyone uh, everybody know Zerti? You have um, a raise hand in the right bottom. If you know Zerti, please raise your hand. So that's only Tom. Then I'm going to explain a bit more about, uh, oh, and Lucy. <laughs> I explain a bit more about the uh, Zerti. Uh, Zerti is an authoring uh, tool that you can use to create uh, media-rich, online, accessible learning modules. Um, you can create a sort of mini websites, but you can also create a module where you can click through uh, and see all kind of uh, information, video, audio, um, text, um, interactions. Um, there are a lot of interactions possible, um, questions, multiple choice, interactive video, uh, the Media360 page I showed you yesterday. I think we have um, more than 70 pages you can use in Xerti. Um, it's really uh, easy to um, distribute. You can uh, just uh, create a link and send a link to someone or put a link in your um, a le a learning management system. Um, or you can use SCORM or LTI, and it's also XAPI enabled, so you can track all the in um, everything that's done if you have a learning record store. Um, then a another very big advantage of Zerti is that you uh, easily can share uh, modules and reuse them. In the Netherlands, we have a project at the moment um, for uh, a, a big group of schools, vocational schools, that are sharing and reusing each other's learning modules. And what they do is they download the module, upload it in their Zerti installation, and um, uh, make some changes um, mm -hmm. so that it fits for their school and their students. So let me show you some examples. This is uh, Dr. No Access. This is an escape room about accessibility. It's created by Helen Goodbein and Shannon uh, Kurunana from the Regents University in London and the South Thames College. Um, they had a, uh, an, ex uh, an um, escape room, but it was made in Padlet and all kind of other uh, tools. So I asked her, is it okay for you to create one in Zerti with the same content? And uh, this is what we created. Uh, when you click on this, I will share the link in um, in the chat uh, that you have this um, learning object itself. Then you can look at it later. Um, so if you click on this, it will open. But for, uh, to be quick, I have opened it in the browser already. So this is the escape room from uh, Helen. Um, when you start uh, it, then um, you get first the goals in this um, escape room. And um, I will talk a bit later about this. Uh, if you um, are creating an escape room, you have to think, is this for fun, just for fun? Or is this uh, surrounding a subject? Do they have to learn a new subject? Or do they have to practice for uh, um, maths or physics or um, uh, history? Um, so you, uh, you need to know the goal where you make it for. And in this case, these are the goals from Helen. Then she starts with a small video. I'm not going to play this now because um, you don't hear it. But in this video, it's explained what you uh, should do uh, by doctor, uh, about Dr. No Access. And he is wanted. We have to uh, search him and disable what he's doing. And this is the mission. Here is also a bit of um, explanation what you should do in this escape room. Um, 
Then um, Helen made um, a linear escape room. So you go from page to page to page. You have an assignment. If you have it right, you go to the next one. And then uh, in the end, that's the fourth one, you can, um, uh, you are in the end of the escape room. Um, this is in English, but it's also a bit in Dutch. Uh, so I try to translate as much as I, I could, but sometimes you have Dutch. So this is an escape room for um, accessibility and how to learn Dutch, I think. So this is level one. Then I get an assignment. Um, this is one image you see here, and we added some um, things to it and uh, some some hotspots. So I can go back to the timeline, and then I'm back at the beginning. Uh, but I can also crack the code. And if I know what this is, um, in this case, um, it's a uh, Morse. I don't know what it's called in the. Uh, in English, but uh, I can go to the next uh, level by entering the code. And in this case, I know the code. So I check it and I have it uh, right. So I have one um, thing down and I have two to go. But my time is uh, running out and Dr. No Access is uh, going further. So I go to level two. Uh, so you see now that level one and level two are open. I go to level two. You see different things. And again, you get an assignment. You can start the assignment here. And if you know the, uh, the code, then you go uh, to crack the code. I will fill it in here. And I go to level three. And uh, when I'm in level three, again, I get an, uh, an assignment. Uh, I can crack the code again. Um, I will crack uh, at the code and I check and I have it right. And I'm at the end. And here is a small video again about Dr. No Access. And we dismantled the bomb in this case. So this is a linear learning object, a linear escape room. But we have another um, example later that's not linear. Just a few, uh, sh some information about when you're creating escape rooms. Um, escape room is not something you do in, in one hour. Uh, you have to plan it, you have to think through it, uh, you have to have all the images, videos, uh, all the assignments that you want, the codes that you want to add in. So you have to plan a bit before you create the escape room. Um, so what's the goal? Um, Make a mind map of everything that you want to have in it. Um, maybe do some storyboarding if you lose, use a lot of visuals. And then um, you can think about the content, the uh, what are the main chapters, clues, maybe also clues that doesn't do anything, just uh, to um, uh, distract uh, the, the users. And uh, some hints and uh, which tools you are using. You can uh, use 30, but there are also possibilities to use 30 with other tools like Padlet or that kind of things. So what pages should you use in 30? Um, I use the, it's the X from I page. That, that's the one I used for the code. But there are different other, a lot of other pages you can use for the, and you will see that in an, another escape room as well. We use a lot the hotspot image connector. That's a bit, uh, you have a big image and on the image you have all kinds of hotspots where you can go to different places or hear something or see a video or that kind of uh, information. Uh, of uh, course, we use also uh, standalone pages. So you create the, the escape room, but sometimes you need other information. And then you create uh, standalone pages where you can click on, then it opens in a model, uh, model uh, window. Uh, you can see uh, and read and, and uh, get the information. And with the cross, you close it. And you're still on the same page in the Xerti uh, escape room. Then, yes, you get what I told you, uh, you can do it just for fun uh, around a specific subject, uh, but also for scales training and onboarding. Yesterday, I showed you the uh, image 
the Media 360 page and the interactive video. Um, if you do some on onboarding, you can use this really for a small uh, escape room um, to get the students and the teachers, new teachers, uh, acquainted with your uh, organization and with your um, uh, university or school. Um, and for um, the distribution, you can do it in this ways. So this is another example. This is made by Menno de Waal from at ROC uh, from Amsterdam. And he um, created this uh, escape room. And this was the first one he created. So I go to this one. Um, you can click on parts here in the escape room. So, um, oh no, my students locked me up in the classroom and I have to find a clue to get out of here. And uh, if you go uh, over our hotspot, you see um, the mouse with a hand and uh, a label. So I know there's here one on the computer. Oh, it still boots. Uh, I have to come back later. It doesn't work. So I can't uh, use that to go out. Here I get some audio message. Um, uh, you don't have uh, uh, dialed a number, so you can't get out of here this way. Um, and then I know here is a door uh, and I'm in the book room, uh, but I can't do anything here except go back. And then all of a sudden, after clicking a lot, I see a light switch here. And now it's dark. And if I go here into the book room, I see something's glowing here. It's very small for you, but when I click on this, I get some information. Oh, I, I need to find a telephone number. And the telephone number is uh, created with these uh, words. And here I see a, there's a paper prop in the classroom. Please uh, look there. So I go back to the classroom. And it's still dark, so I need to put on the light. And here's the, the paper with the uh, assignment on it. So I'm not going to do this assignment because of the time. Um, and now I have to. I know that I have to click out the light again. And uh, I noticed that after doing this several times. I go here again. Go here again. Um, yes, I, I know the number, for example. And um, I can click here to go to the phone. So I have to. Click on the light again and go to the phone. And now I can choose a phone number. Um, I will pick this one. Uh, and now I get a message that this is the wrong no number. Try again. So I go back to the classroom. I have to put on the light again. And I will pick this one. This is the right answer. So I confirm. And now I get a message with an assignment in it. And you don't hear it, but uh, uh, I know the assignment. So I um, go back to the classroom, and I know now what to do. But before I do that, I have to go in here again. So it takes you much longer to find this out, but you, uh, the students will click around and uh, do a lot of uh, things before they are here. So I will put the light on again, go to the computer, and here I can uh, answer the question. Now, if I've answered the question, I get an open door and I can get out. So this is an, a different way of um, having an escape room. You have one um, place where you are, and you can click on uh, several uh, things, but you, you manage it for, from that one uh, classroom. So I have another example. Um, I go back here, and you can do this later also. Um, this is made by uh, Malika Adam from the Windersheim College. It's a higher education uh, school, and she's a real escape room lover. And what she did uh, is create this um, this box. And everything you see in this box are really small uh, items, a small table and a small lamp and a small candle. Um, and she created that. And she uh, asked me to help her to make an um, online version of this escape room. So we tried. 
to do that. Let me see. Uh, this is in Dutch, but if you use Google Chrome, you can translate it in English. It will not translate everything, but uh, a lot. So first you get some information about how this uh, escape room works and also an audio file that's um, uh, telling something. Um, so this is the escape room she built. This is the box and she made pictures of it. When I go into this room and, or when I click here, I can't go in. Um, I have to find some answers first. And this is a non-linear escape room with a lot of rooms that you have to find your way around. And in this room, the living room, I have a lot of items I can click on. For example, the money. And I get the message, oh, I saw money. Maybe I can use this later. In this case, you can't do anything but it, with it, but they are distractors. Um, what's also uh, really good on this um, escape room is that you don't have a question and one answer, but you have to do two Several, several um, of two different um, uh, questions or uh, assignments and connected them together to have the, re the total code. So that's, and sometimes it's in this room and sometimes is it uh, in another room. Um, uh, for example, um, uh, this um, paint, uh, painting, um, this is in this room but I can find, inf can find information to do it in another room. So in this case, I find an uh, arrow here that's very important. And I found, find a number here. It's a bit dark for you, but uh, there's a number here. So when you do the escape room and uh, when you, you can uh, let uh, student groups work on it. So each group is doing um, the escape room and uh, who's uh, there. In the end, at first, they won. <laughs> um, but during their way to, through the escape room, you have to think about what do they need, what they, do they write, have to write down uh, to do all the assignments. Um, for example, in this case, below this uh, carpet, there is a lock. And when I click on it, I get um, the question that I have to unlock it, lock it, but I don't have any code yet for to do that. Um, I can go back to the map, and from the map I can back go back to into this room. So I have to go to another room to get the code to do this. Um, I can um, uh, there is an assignment here, uh, and that's connected to this assignment. There's two assignments, and if I cre uh, do them, and I have to write answer. I can uh, click on uh, this button here um, to enter the code. But if I don't know what to do, I've also uh, added variables. Uh, so um, I've added hints and that's in the question mark. So I click on the question mark and I get one hint. Um, so uh, maybe now I know what to do. So I go back to the map and go ba in back into the living room. Um, I try some things, but it doesn't still work. Then I click on the question mark again, and I have a second um, hint. And um, this is all done by variables in Xerti. So this also works with variables, uh, but that's a bit more complicated than um, just adding uh, uh, the linear things in the other escape rooms. This is a complex escape room. And what you also can use is um, next to uh, variables is a uh, JavaScript to do some things. So I'm going out of this uh, place. I know the code. And oh, hooray, I opened the kitchen. And now I go back to the kitchen. And when I click here below, I can go back to the uh, living room and I can, can go into the kitchen. kitchen. And if I um, discovered all the rooms and the codes, I get this. So I have five rooms, uh, but you only see the room that you have opened. If you don't have uh, the, the basement uh, open, this is the basement, then you don't see it here on the map. Go back here. Let me see the time. Yes, okay. Um, so you have all kind of uh, 
exercises. This is um, a page that you uh, get some information. You don't know yet what, um, but you can click on the cross and you're back here. Um, so this is not, uh, so this is the non-linear escape room. Of, and um, it's also very uh, complicated to create. So before we made this, we made a big uh, plan um, and uh, added everything in there and know what the questions are and what the, uh, what images we use, what videos, so all kind of media is in here. So how does it look on the uh, creating side? So this is the workspace from Xerti. So you see here all my um, learning objects I have. And in this case, I'm going to show you um, uh, this one. This is a small example. If I click here, I can play it. It's a, an example about Halloween. Uh, escape room first steps. It's a really simple uh, escape room. I get the image connector page, so the image uh, where you can click on different hotspots. For example, I can click here. I get some information. I can click here. I get an audio file. And uh, when I click uh, on the house, I get a video about what's Halloween. And when I click here, I can answer a question. And in this case, um, what date is Halloween? So it's the first uh, uh, 31 one, uh, October. <laughs> um, and uh, it's on All Saints Day. So, okay. So now I should have the code, but I uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but um, behind the answers if uh, was a, um, a character and I needed to remember the character. Did, if I didn't do that, I have to do it again and I can go to the, back to the first steps. But now I'm going to enter the code and yes, I go to level two. So this is a very simple uh, escape room with just one step in it. But how does, it, does that look when you create it? Um, this is the es ex escape room. These are the pages. In this case, uh, this is just a title page. Um, and this one is the one with uh, the image connector uh, page. And here I have my media. And I have a choose for the uh, the Halloween house um, or the house in moonlight. In this case, that is uh, the image I used uh, to add the hotspots on. And here below are the hotspots. So if I go to challenge one, you see here uh, that this is this is a hotspot. Um, it's a bit silly because that's orange too. I better show a different one. For example, the fence. This is the hotspot. And if I click in the escape room on the fence, then this is going to happen. So I made my hotspot and uh, this is what's going to happen. I get some text and hey, a fence, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I can also have uh, audio. Uh, I have uh, add audio or a video. In this case, this is then the X from I, or the, the in this case, the this is the quiz where we had the questions. And here we have the X from I page or the Gapville page. And uh, here I add the code. Um, so you only need those three or four pages to have one step of the escape room. And you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. Um, we have five minutes left. Uh, are there any questions? You can add your questions to the chat or you can unmute yourself um, if you have joined with microphone i've unlocked everyone so please feel free to work either way if you need me to unmute you just raise your hand
Looks like we have a question coming through in the chat. Maybe. And good, this is amazing. Um, I was just thinking about a lot of different um, ideas for this. Seems like it would be great for language learning. Um, could be really great for um, asynchronous uh, courses. Um, I also felt like it could be a really interesting um, student project. Um, but let's see. So we've got a, a question from Didi. Have you seen institutions use this in the gamification of a class? The great question. Uh, Didi. Yeah. Do you mean in a class or? Yes, in yes. a class. Yes. Yes, I am. Um, uh, the examples that you have, uh, especially the one uh, about your locked up, um, are used for uh, students, um, but also for t uh, teachers and, uh, for example, for onboarding. Um, I have another example, but that was really Dutch, <laughs> uh, for a history teacher, and he had um, uh, a map with co countries on it and in each country you have to do an assignment that's connected to that country so uh, to the history of the, that country and it was really a nice way to learn some history uh, in a playful uh, way um, there is a module also that's called playful learning I don't know if you know it um, it's not that um, common um, but I really love that way of working to um, uh, engage students by playing, and by playing, they are learning. And and uh, Lucy, you are saying, um, you were thinking about the different approaches and, and uses you could have for this. Another one is, for example, math or science. Because Xerti has um, uh, using variables, you can add all different um, kind of um, uh, assignments in it and each time you get a different one so as a teacher you don't have to change uh, every time the, the the assignments because you get different ones oh so you can have like a question pool in a way that uh, randomly chooses yeah you have you have numbers and it's it's uh, choose a number for example between 1 and 10 and um, minus a, a number between 100 and 200 for example so you don't uh, have to make the questions over and over again. It's it's creating themselves. But that's great. This looks amazing. I don't see any more questions coming through the chat. I'll just wait for another second to see if we have other questions. We be making. You'll be sharing your slides. Yes, I will put uh, the link in uh, the chat now, so you can have to take a look. But please, <laughs> it is some in Dutch. So. Um, it's language training and escape room uh, together. And if you have any question, uh, I will be here uh, the whole conference, And uh, but you can also send me an email. Um, we have also a playground where you can play a bit around with Dirty if you want, uh, but please let me know. Oh, this is awesome. Jolene oh. has also put, oh, wonderful, an example from Duke in the chat. I will capture all of the chat for us as well. That's wonderful. Great. Inga, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Um,